All right, all done episode two of Making the Cut. So we had two episodes this week. We'll have to wait until next Friday for our next episode. And I believe from here on out, we just get one episode every Friday. So spoiled a little bit with two episodes today. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So first off, the winning designs from episode one and episode two are available on Amazon. Uh, it was a little tricky to get to the store. I searched making the cut store on Amazon to to get to get there. So uh, if you want to see the designs, I will try to find links and put them in my description so you can you can see them on Amazon. But uh, let's get into the episode. So today was all about couture inspired designs. That wasn't v initially super clear to me on what the challenge was that it was couture inspired and initially seeing all of the designers go and it just looked like they were grabbing some interesting fabric and calling it good and I'm and I'm sitting there thinking you know they talked all this stuff about handmade intricate designs and then no one is going for that sort of aesthetic uh, then it, it got revealed later on. No, just couture inspired. The level of designs that we got this week compared to last week, I felt was significantly lower. We had a lot more designers send designs that had major issues down the runway. Uh, we might as well just start with Martha. I think it was pretty clear that she was having issues right from the get go basically threw away her entire first day of design. We already saw last week that she has issues with sewing, doesn't sew herself, gets seems to just seems to do everything. Like she is strictly a designer and on on the two day challenge that really just blew up in her face. She's the accessible look she sent down the runway was just a chunk of fabric pinned around a model. I mean, I would be embarrassed to send that down the runway and I am I have no fashion acumen. I have no sew, sewing expertise. Like and I would be embarrassed by that. And this is someone who's a professional designer. I really feel like Martha was in over her head on this show. I don't feel like she did a good job of representing herself and her brand and I honestly think that she does have some skill and talent. The looks that they showed from her normal everyday brand were interesting. They were unique. They were loud. I can understand her point of view, but what she showed in our first two episodes did not reflect that at all. Like today was just a total disaster for Martha and I think it was a no-brainer decision to see her sent home. So next up, let's talk about Johnny. Johnny really has this kind of punk leather jacket sort of vibe. And and today he really missed the mark. He, he had two designs. The first one was kind of at least a little bit interesting. It was like a leather jacket into like a flowing black gown, but it just there, it was just like you just look at it and look at the model walking down the runway and something just didn't feel right. And I don't know if that was just the fit on the jacket, the overall design. I don't know. Something was just not right. And then his second model, he just made a bathrobe. It was just a bathrobe with some baggy leather pants underneath. And that was it. And like you, I was walk, watching, watching the model get to the end of the runway. I was like, okay, there's got to be a reveal here. He's going to pull off that kimono. We're going to see the real design underneath now. Nope, nothing. Just a, just a kimono bathrobe. That was it. The difference between Martha and Johnny that we saw with the judges was Johnny has a vision he has a brand, he has direction, and he, can, and he can sell that and is confident that he's going to be able to sell that. So he stays, but he was definitely down at the bottom today. Uh, I just quickly want to talk about Sabuto. He 
based his whole design on his recently passed mother. He said his mother passed uh, two weeks ago from when this episode happened. So it was just kind of sad watching him kind of go through the process of, you know, being inspired by his mother and seeing how close he had been to his mother and then getting to see him use her as an influence for his design today. I thought both of his designs were were exceptional. They were both very similar. I didn't really see the difference between the runway or the runway and the accessible look. And I think that is probably why we didn't see Sabuto on the top today. But just wanted to point him out as someone who I think did a great job today. All right, next up we have G1. So G1 had two very cool looks. And one was this uh, short white dress, ruffled, pleated, and and the she didn't win, wasn't wasn't really on the top, but one of the fashion executives for Amazon was at the show, loved her look, and just decided, you know what, we're just gonna sell that on Amazon. So even though G didn't win, she gets to have her look sold on Amazon, along with today's winner, who was Esther once again. So that's back-to-back -back victories for Esther. She really crushed it in, t in today's challenge. She gave two looks. You could clearly see that they went together. Many of the other designers just didn't do that. They, did, they didn't address that. They just sent out two looks and, and called, it, called it a day. And that was not the goal. You're, you're making a high fashion couture design and then using that as inspiration for an accessible, wearable, everyday design. And Esther, I felt, did that better than anyone else's competition. And she wins again. Her designs were beautiful. They were elegant. You could tell right away that it was her. It was Esther. And uh, I think very deservedly got the victory today. Uh, another person who didn't get a critique but I thought did a great job was Megan. We haven't seen a ton from her so far. Uh, she made this beautiful white spider web couture look that I thought was sensational. And one thing I noticed about it, it was the dress that they've been using as the example for the difference between the accessible and the runway look. They used Megan's two looks today. Uh, lastly, I just want to touch on Sander quickly. He sent down the loudest, most show-stopping his piece of the day. Not all the judges appreciated it, but he went for it and he went for this gigantic, it, it really felt avant-garde, which I think kind of got away from what our challenge was today, since it was supposed to be couture. And it really felt like a bunch of the designers just didn't make couture today. So he <laughs> sent out this grand, puffy, silver, donut hole look that was, you know, something you'll always remember for the rest of your life and will never see replicated again. So I'm, I'm just excited to see what Sander brings to the table for the rest of the season. Clearly, he is not afraid of just absolutely going for it and just believing in himself and believing in his designs. All right, that is it for episode two. I will be back next Friday for episode three. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later.